what if I told you that you could get your financial life in order with a snap of a finger? Uh, you might think I'm a crazy person because we often feel like we're, we're miles from where we want to be in terms of our retirement, in terms of paying off debt, uh, in terms of our bank accounts. And, and this is often where we find ourselves when we, we, we find ourselves in worldly thinking. But the amazing thing about God is he's unconcerned with dollar signs and zeros at the end of a bank statement. Because he, he owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills. He has everything that he needs, and he needs nothing from you and nothing from me. In fact, God can provide everything we need to live a life of godliness. This is the God that we serve. And, and because God is not a God who's in need of anything, uh, he cares far more about our hearts. And this is something that we've got to remind ourselves as believers, is that God cares about my money motives uh, more than he cares about the money in my bank account. He, he cares about the attitudes of our hearts. And we see that in this story because Jesus warns this group of scribes. He says, uh, you, you, you've given a lot, but you've given for the wrong reasons. In fact, he says that their motives have received for them a greater condemnation. In other words, uh, they, they've heaped judgment on themselves for doing things for the wrong reason. And he contrasts these scribes with this, this poor widow, and, and he says about her uh, that she's given more than anyone else because she's given out of her poverty. It, isn't that crazy that God, God doesn't care about the, the quantity, nor does he care about the quality of the gift, but rather the heart and the attitude with which we bring it. And, and so it begs the question, how do we make sure that our attitude is right? How do we evaluate our attitude when, when it comes to our finances? Because if your attitude is right, then your financial life will be in order. Your, your financial life will be pleasing to God, and God will give you everything you need to live a life of godliness. Maybe not uh, all of the money that you dreamed of, but certainly everything you need to honor and serve him. And, and simply, I'd encourage you with this, is that you can use a budget uh, to reveal your attitude. You can use a budget to reveal your attitude. You know, the trouble for the scribes was they had a major blind spot when it came to money. They had a major blind spot with, with how they were using their money and, and whether or not it was being used appropriately. But budgets help us erase the blind spots because they help to reveal our fruits. You know, uh, the, the book of 1 Samuel, it says about the human condition, it says that the Lord, he doesn't look at thing, the things that people look at. The Lord uh, judges the heart, but, but man looks at outward appearance. And, and what do we do when our hearts deceive ourselves? What do we do when we can't get a, get a, a feel for what's going on with our attitudes, our hearts, and our motives? Uh, we look at the fruit. You'll know a good tree by its fruit is what Jesus said. And, and, and so a budget is a way that we can, we can look at, man, what is the, the outworking of our financial life? What are the outworkings of our motives? A am I a generous person? Am I honoring God? Am I being loving towards, towards others? And, and we learn, man, we learn uh, how to do this from the story in some incredible ways. And I, and I want to frame these, these in terms of three questions uh, to help evaluate our attitudes using a budget. Uh, the first one is, is this question of, does my budget reflect self-importance? And it, is my spending, is my saving, is my earning uh, a reflection of a life that's honoring God and, and a life that's biblical and, and it's, it's fruit? Uh, or is it a reflection of, of being self, self-serving? self Because this is what we see in the contrast between the scribes and the widow. You'll notice that the scribes, uh, they use money to buy uh, long robes uh, to, to receive public approval in the marketplace. They, they loved the greetings of others. Uh, they loved that people thinking that they were amazing. And it says that they use their money to, to receive for themselves places of honor. Now, uh, Jesus, he looks at them and he says, beware, uh, don't use your money for stuff like this. And then he commends this widow. And I love, I love the widow because she, she gives her two copper coins uh, in private. Uh, nobody notices it. But in this act of giving out of her poverty, what is she saying? She's saying, uh, to, she's saying to God and about God that he is the one who's robed and clothed in glory. She's saying about God that he's the one who's seated in the highest place of honor. He, he's seated on the throne high and exalted. Her attitude is, is reflected in how she's using her money. 
And the crazy thing is, is if, if you're living a life to prove your worth, if you're uh, living a life to achieve status, if you're living a life uh, to acquire for yourself more comfort, then, then you, you're probably not lifting up the name of Christ. You're probably not suffering for the sake of Christ. And, and this widow reflects that she's not living a life of self-importance, but a life of gratitude. And I'm so encouraged by this because no matter how much money I have in my bank account, I can live with a life of gratitude towards the Lord, knowing that I have a right relationship with him through the work of Jesus on the cross. And so that's the first question. Uh, the second question is this, does my budget reflect sacrificial worship giving? You see, you see Jesus, he didn't say that the scribes weren't giving, uh, but he does say that they were giving in order to devour widows' houses. Isn't that a picture? Uh, you know, uh, taking a bite off of more than you can chew, I'd say. But, but these scribes, they, they were not so much concerned with honoring God, but they were concerned with what they could get from the process. Uh, they, they, were, they were more concerned not with what they could give, but what they could get. And the truth is, as Christians, we often find ourselves doing this without even realizing it. And Jesus warns us not to do this. And, and, and I've, I've experienced it in my own life. I find myself sitting in a pew and saying, I'm not getting anything out of this message. I'm not getting anything out of this preaching. I wish that he would go deeper in the word of God. And what am I doing with my critical spirit but focusing on what I can get instead of what I can give back to God in worship? And when we gather as Christians, we ought to live like this widow. And one of the ways that we do that is in our finances. We say, Lord, everything that I have belongs to you. Everything I have has been provided to me by, by you. I mean, everything I have uh, is, is uh, something that you would be worthy to receive as an offering. And, and the widow reflects this because she gives out of her poverty. She could use this to feed herself, but instead she says, I have the bread of life in the person of Jesus. I have everything I need in the God who's saved, forgiven, redeemed, and loved me. And so she was there to give. And I would just ask you the question, when you look at your spending and at your budget, does it reflect sacrificial giving like the widow? Or does it, does it reflect an attitude that devours and consumes others so that you can have what you feel like you need? That's the second question. Uh, the third question is this, uh, does my budget reflect support for those in need? Does my budget reflect the support for those in need? You know, one of the amazing things about God is he has a generous spirit. Uh, he's always giving. Uh, God is uh, full of grace and truth. He, he doesn't lie to us and he gives us everything that we need to live a life of godliness. He gives us everything we need out of his grace, not out of our effort. And, and it's an amazing thing that's reflected in the, the offering of the widow. And she's, she's not concerned about what she's missing. Uh, she's contributing to, to the worship and the, the, uh, the benevolence of those who are coming to the temple for, to have their needs met. But the scribes, in a, in a sad uh, uh, turn of events, they contribute to the temple too, but they do it to buy a place of honor. And, and maybe you've been there, right, where, where you give to make yourself feel better. Uh, maybe, you've, maybe you've been in a place where, where you give and then you look over your shoulder to see if, if anybody noticed. And, and the truth is, is, is that's an attitude that, that we can see in our, in our budgetary giving. Uh, do I give publicly or do I give privately? Am I generous when nobody's looking, uh, or am I only generous when people can applaud and give me uh, the attention? And, and when we look at our budgets, we can, we can begin to see, man, am, am I living a life for my own comfort, my own self-importance, my, my own elevation? Am I, am I giving, uh, am I giving to, to benefit or move my life forward, or am I giving simply because of I know that I've received more from Christ? You know, I was thinking about this uh, the other day, and, and you know, I, I wonder what would happen to me if every time I opened my wallet, every time I took a debit card out of the wallet, if I felt gratitude, appreciation, and worship towards the Lord. Like, I wonder how much my attitude would change if, if every time I looked at my budget, I thought, man, am I, am I giving God the glory and the honor that he deserves? Uh, because, man, the more that I do that, the more my, the more my life is transformed with, 
with freedom and generosity and, and healthy relationships because I'm no longer stressed out or anxious about what I don't have, but rather I'm thankful for what God has provided and, and he's provided more than I could ever deserve or want. And I'm not talking about money. He's provided uh, a, a right relationship with himself through the person of Jesus. And, and so I want to encourage you uh, that you may not be able to get your, your bank statement balanced overnight, but you can certainly, through an act of repentance and faith, get your heart right with the Lord in terms of your finances to say, Lord, what I have belongs to you, and I'd like you I'd like you to help me sort it out as I, I make a budget and make a plan for how I can be a steward of all that you've given me. And I hope your conversation is incredible and, and, and I encourage you to work some of these things out practically. What would it actually look like uh, to honor the Lord with your spending?